This conference will now be recorded. Okay, guys, to introduce myself, myself Ravinder, uh, I'm working as a SQL DB last 14 years. I'm working on MongoDB close to seven years now. And I do work on Azure Cloud, AWS Cloud, and I do work on Postgres and MySQL as well. So I, I work on multiple platforms, in fact. That's my passion. And uh, even teaching is also my passion. So I, I have teach, you know, I'm teaching people since the last seven years. So this is about, you know, a little info about myself. So let's get into the uh, today's objective. Uh, today's agenda of our discussion is about what is NoSQL actually? Why we need to learn NoSQL when we have RDBMS in the market, which is very sophisticated products actually we have. So why we are people are showing interest to move towards NoSQL, we're going to discuss that. What are the benefits over RDBMS we're going to discuss and uh, Benefits of or RDBMS. This is the main topic of discussion. What we need to understand today's class. I'm going to tell you all the benefits and what are the different terms that we have in RDBMS NoSQL. Uh, we will call it out. And we have different NoSQL products as well, like uh, RDBMS. In RDBMS, we have Oracle, SQL Server, Postgres, MySQL, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That way, same. We do have many products in NoSQL as well, but out of among all. Uh, Adobe is taking the first place in NoSQL family and next is uh, MongoDB in terms of uh, market uh, share and as well as implementation wise. So why this Mongo is so you know popular also we will talk about few points we will talk about it. And in RDBMS it follows as it property in uh, all NoSQL family will follow the base property. What exactly these two are? Acid we know what is the base property and what, how it is different from Acid. We're going to talk about that okay so this is the main agenda so let's talk about uh, what is noSQL basically noSQL is actually introduced 1990 it's not a new technology in fact it is old technology but it was not actually you know implemented in the market because we had 10 years ago if you take about 10 to 10 years ago just example that time nobody was having the smart devices and uh, data data feed into the system was limited and fixed in fact so now everybody have a smart device everybody are generating the data and data is absolutely versatile it is a structured semi-structured unstructured and there is no control what data people are generating nowadays so rdbms is absolutely limited to structured data it does not take the unstructured data or semi-structured data you have to define the structure and load the data so that's where this noise scale products will come into picture where when you have to handle unstructured data, semi-structured, even it, it, it handles with the structured data as well. So it has many flexibilities over RDBMS. We're going to talk point by point, but it was introduced by, you know, Carl Stroji. This is a person who introduced the file-based system in the 1998, and it has many products. So NoSQL also have a group of products with different types of products in the market. So out of all, again, Mongo is actually taking more market. Why? That also we will talk about. First, let's understand, guys. You know how MongoDB or NoSQL products work and how RDBMS. Little of information I wanted to give, then enter into the slide side. If you talk about all RDBMS, you'll have a standalone server and you have data, a lot of data. Then you'll introduce more data drives, right? Within a single server, you introduce more drives and more files so that data will get striped out to distribute the IO power on the server, right? So the more data, the more disk. The more disk, the the more files you introduce in each drive, so that data will get distributed to different drives when you are writing it. So this way you can actually get the better IO, right? But if the data is growing further, you will expand it. Like keep expanding it. So as the data is growing more and more, you increase the number of CPUs also on the machine. The number of the more number of CPU cores, the more billing you will have to pay. All RDBMS products nowadays are core-based licensing model. How many cores you deploy in the machine? That many licenses you have to pay for it. Okay, so that is okay. You know people are okay to pay, but when the data grows in TBs of TBs, in fact, when the data grows in TBs. You cannot do the maintenance activity. The problematic thing is maintenance. If like a rebuilding index, reorganizing the indexes, if you don't do this over a time, you absolutely see the downfall of your performance of the server because of there is no indexing. It is going through the scans to find the data and the large data sets. It definitely gets slowed down. 
and if your data is too big doing the maintenance activities also you have to do but if you're doing it it takes days in fact so business cannot afford to give the days of maintenance window for just for the indexes in fact so that way your data is becomes too big then you cannot manage it on the server server can process but you cannot do the maintenance activities the problem is rdmm is quite capable enough to process the huge bulk data sets the problem is you cannot do the maintenance if you cannot do the maintenance your data cannot be retrieved as expected performance levels that's the limitation it becomes a limitation in fact so in rdbm as in if you if you take about no sql the no sql all no sql architecture will follow this you'll have the replica sets will have the replica sets almost all no sql family will follow the similar architecture okay so just try to follow so here data will get distributed to multiple physical servers here okay and all are writable and readables at one go so here we are adding the power in terms of computer computing power so let's let me draw this i'll explain it don't worry you will get it just an idea first what is no sql what is sql let's understand the basic difference then we'll enter into the slide set so that you understand much better so basically these are all replica sets these are all replica sets it will maintain the exact copy of the data one whatever it has exactly the same data will be there in other servers too with all the till the last byte of the data okay this is a replica set one or shard one you can call it as shard one okay either of it so just let me draw this and then i'll explain shard two shard three i'm going to discuss this in practical i'm going to configure everything what we are trying to discuss here okay config servers and these are all mongoose server or router servers we'll call it as okay mongoose so here also mongoose right so these are all like client facing machines client all application servers will connect to the mongoose okay all applications will connect to the mongoose mongoose in turn will get the data from the config server where the data is actually this will contact the config server okay config server knows where data is if i have a table or collection we'll call it as a collection here if i load a collection data in the all no scale family what happens generally this kind of architecture it will call, it will follow horizontal scaling i'll talk about horizontal what is exactly so if i load a collection or table here it will distribute the data equally into all the shards equally you can write the data in all the servers you can read the data from all the server data you are just submitting a request to the mongoose mongoose will contact the config server where data is in fact it knows which chunk in which server in fact your query will be redirected to all three servers for all write operations all read operations we'll talk about we have a configurations if you are going with the write intensive workload you have to go with the different sharding if you are going the read intensive sharding read intensive workload you have to go to different shard we're going to talk about range based sharding we have hash based sharding different types of shards we have shardings we have and that is situational when do we go for what sharding kind of thing so here why i'm discussing this guys for under, understand first the basic difference all rdbms you can only write into one server in fact even oracle oracle actually you can write into multiple servers data guard concept uh, you can write into multiple servers in oracle sql you cannot do but oracle we can do it you'll have multiple servers will accept the read writes which is okay the problem with the oracle also is one physical storage where it will hit it is a logical amount given to all the servers you know from all the servers you can read write into one logical value at the end you are actually going to one storage subsystem in fact you cannot go to multiple storage subsystem even with the data guard with the oracle technology also in sql in sql server with always on concept you can write into any any technology for that matter even cluster always on anything in any technology in any database technology also you can write into one server only at any point of time so it will distribute to other servers to in, in case of dr if this gets fail it will fail over to here for that reason you'll create always on concepts or clustering concept or database te database technologies all that but any at any point of time one node is writable other node is not writable in fact so here if you come to the no sql technology it's not like that you write in one table or one collection 
it will go to all the physical servers and whatever it is written here it is exactly maintain the same copy this gets fellow this gets shut down for some reason it will pick up the load automatically and here there are three copies for every chunk of the data every you know like data that what is getting distributed the data is protected with multiple copies of the servers in fact okay and this is going to have the more data you keep on the server if it is going up to the beyond level then you add one more shard once you example example i have here uh, 100 gb data as you make it here also 100 gb data here also 100 gb data so data becoming more yeah i'll come to that don't worry i mean i'm just talking about uh, can you please explain basic architecture terminology before jumping into mongo I, i'm coming to that don't worry this is what is mongo anyway i'm trying to explain about rdbms first and uh, this one i'll come to the architectures don't worry we we the most of the discussions in the beginning will enter into the mongo architecture what are the background services how they built how they interact and what are the recoveries we have in the background how it happens with the diagram with the diagrams don't worry i'll discuss everything with the diagram then enter into the discussion side first just understand the basic difference between the rdbms and no sql that's the big point i wanted to cover first then i'll come to the architectures of this product anyway mongo anyway we we get into this product we are talking about no sql only right now so now whatever the data i am entering into a collection or table it is get getting distributed to different servers and each server has a chunk of a table or collection not all the data is sitting into one server set in fact whatever the data i load here it will replicate to other other two servers it is getting replicated and protected even in case of one node is down other node is picking up and it is available for you so it is giving high availability as well as high scalability this is a big point you need to catch it is horizontal scaling we'll call it as horizontal scaling okay rdbms rdbms will call vertical scaling vertical scaling means you keep giving the power to one machine as the data is growing out so when data becomes very vast you cannot do the maintenance if you cannot do the maintenance of the data like rebuilding reorganizing indexes on regular basis you cannot find the good performance and from the server though it is highly sophisticated high powered configured but you cannot do in within the given window it will you see if i have example 5 tb data doing the rebuilding indexes it takes more than a day or two assume a case people cannot afford right that long data time just for the indexing itself so if you cannot do that you cannot get the good performance from the server that becomes slowly a dime uh limitation on the performance based on the details in config server data is routed to the particular shard right particular shard depends on the data range how much data you are reading it if example each chunk there is a concept called chunk one chunk will have 64 mb data if you are reading more than 64 mb data it will go to multiple servers because data is already divided in the shards or already for a single collection for a single table okay so here all noisql for family follow the distributed computing model distributed and horizontal scaling one single query will go and hit multiple servers hundreds of servers if you look at the if you look at the facebook if you look at the instagram all social media platforms are absolutely running on the noisql family they won't scale with the rdbms at all never and you never see the blocking why there is no blocking in the noisql we'll talk about it there will be blocking but for the social media you never see that your profile got hung it never loads kind of why it happens there is architecture we need to understand to get to that point but architectures will come in the 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 product architecture will come in the further discussion but we are un trying to understand the basic difference between the no sql and sql part especially so here data distribution of each collection is going to multiple servers and multiple or whatever the chunk it got it is protected with three more servers okay so this way your distribution computing model can scale with any amount of data the bigger the data the more server set you have to build so the data distribution will happen and it never get choked on any of the request because of the data distribution is already done it can absolutely scale with any amount of data there is no such limitation that it won't scale after this storage kind of there is no such limitation these are all big data platforms all analytical all if you talk about artificial intelligence this kind of operations all are going through the noise kill family only it's not possible with the rdbms products nowadays 
if you talk about uh, rdbms just for the basic rule try to understand i wanted to make you understand on all these points just try to understand example i'm creating a table just for the example i have a table already let me see the structure what columns i do have okay i have three columns so what i'm going to do i'm going to insert data into this insert into student values i'm trying to insert some data here so just try to understand so if i'm trying to insert this data i'm following the structure i have seen the structure and i have seen the structure if i try to do it uh, if i'm trying to insert it will take the data but if i'm trying to give extra field a phone number extra it will throw the error why because it did not define the field in the table for that entry right so if i'm not giving in quotations just giving the number it's a numeric value numeric value will take but there is no structure to take the number of columns and supplied values does not match whereas mongo if you take it about mongo i am connected to one of the database called class i'm going to create a table create no need to create it will create the tables database everything on the fly it is absolutely dynamic schema model db dot uh, test testing dot insert i'm inserting some data don't worry about the collection collection will create it on the fly and it takes data s number one just try to understand s name example yeah i get it okay i'm inserting it got inserted next record i'm trying to insert second record second record here is kumar okay and i'm adding the address it got accepted and third record so all no skill family will follow this it does not follow any structure it is a schema less which means you don't need to define any schema it is absolutely dynamic on the fly things will happen you don't have to worry about absolutely okay so next if i go to here understand the basic difference i'll come to the slides then you really understand what i'm trying to talk in each slide if you understand this so if you take about if i go and read this table okay so data if you look at the first record the second record and third record they are absolutely different in structure they are not same and i did not define any structure to the table i just inserted it is created this you know like table we'll call it as collection but for now i'm calling it as a table because you might be familiar with the table term so in this one i did not create any structure i just created on the fly and then pick the data as i'm loading it it is not rejecting me at all it is created on the fly it was not there before we had only two collections before now testing got created and it it got the data however you are loading it won't reject any data in any format any uh, structure that you give it to the system so this is called unstructured data structured data unstructured data semi structured data some follow the structure some does not know follow the structure it doesn't matter it just takes the data as it is coming into the system so that is something another biggest advantage for this product for this product hi ravi yeah go ahead vikas yeah question fine seems you don't have question fine so what i mean to say guys here rdbms does not scale with a large volume of data set absolutely and example if you have a database one database and this database files are spammed across let me draw this perfectly uh, maybe get this better will be uh sorry uh, sorry uh, ravi sorry actually i was talking on mute i started talking okay. Mute. okay okay so so my question is uh in mongodb so we are not creating or uh, any column any table and it's a database started when you are starting inserting data mm. so, mm. so it is not asking for column or table mm. or, or column only it won't ask anything everything even database also it won't ask you database also will create on the fly it will create the collection on the fly it will take the data as you are sending it it doesn't reject any data in any format it can take a, any format if you talk about okay. application logs if you take about application logs if you log if you take about any uh, user social media someone is loading the video someone is writing the comment you know the length is does not known 
and uh, e- e- people can do anything on the social media platform or social any for that matter but some products so their you see your system need to accept any data in any format right so their these products are, so these products will come into handy in fact okay yeah got it yeah, right i have a question yeah please go ahead Uh, if you are entering uh, the uh, the data randomly or dynamically uh, doing the insertion means so if there are any duplicate results that has been inserted uh, uh, ran dynamically what will happen while fetching the data very good question that may no no don't worry i have i'm going to talk by default mongodb does not impose any conditions conditions are explicit we will create schema design fourth module is a schema design this question is actually absolutely answered in that module we can create a collection with conditions if this condition is matched then only take the data that is explicit by default product does not impose any conditions but you have to impose if you want that is called schema design so you have to define it okay. so if this is there accept and, uh, it if not there don't accept it uniqueness you want to Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, can we? Can you show me the uh, architecture that you have shown in uh, previously? That uh, the how yeah, the no. uh, Mongo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Here I have a doubt here. So mm-hmm. in Mongo DB, uh, if you are uh, ca- through configuration servers, all the collection of data will be transferred into uh, n number of checks. Okay. So mm-hmm. while transferring uh, read and write uh, uh, has been happened parallelly. Uh, that the uh, server will be uh, using n number of cpus while uh, reading and uh, writing the data so will that uh, impact the server of uh, performance issue that may that may uh, cause the performance of that particular server but because the server will uh, on continuously reading the data writing the data into different types of chunks uh, in uh, not different you uh, should not see reading the bulk data from one server is definitely i would choke right you are reading huge data from multiple drives still it will choke up it is not a, a disk it is a server different processing power you are giving it to each session in fact each each you know like a, it is a parallel sessions right one session is divided into multiple sessions kind of thing it is going to each server and getting the different resource all together physical disk and io power even you write it will io subsystem will be shared even you read io subsystem is shared should so give the better performance when it is shared in terms of machine in terms of machines we are scaling up not in terms of disks here so it gives 100% better performance compared to rdbms rdbms always limited if example you i created a database and i stripe the files into each individual disk here if one disk is fail or one not only one disk one Oh, a few bytes are corrupted entire database will be down it 10 tb but it is what is corrupted is 1 mb still entire database will be down it is corrupted a suspect will go to suspect mode you cannot access the entire database no sql is not like that even your chunk is down one chunk is down still other chunks will operate so you don't get this data when you are trying to touch the range of data what is from the shard you will get the error but if you are reading the data within this boundaries you never get the error no single point of failure whatever the data is available at least that is accessible but rdbm is not like that one disk is down the entire database will go down the entire database system will go down because of one file is not available so there are so many benefits a, mm-hmm. okay my question is if for uh, according to this architecture the the uh, configuration of this mongodb will be in a uh, uh, different level right when compared yes. to normal yes sir so we will go through every step don't worry i am going to take understand the concept that's the main important point i wanted to clear out okay right okay. right come okay. to the slides you get a basic idea at least uh, you know the rdbms are all you know like a single point of failure first thing second thing is it cannot it cannot process the large volume sets it cannot operate on the non schema level data levels like uh, it is a fixed schema model it need to be defined the schema then it, you need to load the data into correct architecture it will have the high availability high scalability there are many many benefits that we need to cover up slowly I'll, i'll cover up don't worry okay so what is no sql 
no skill stands for not only a skill we have the skill with the sophisticated so you know older technology and it is being used for decades as of now why we need it we need it for the new generation people new ge go on mute someone is not on mute uh, rahul can you go on mute if you can if you have a question you can unmute and talk else you right uh, unmuted so here guys this no skill platform is a big data platforms these will these products will handle enormous amount of data in fact there is no limitation on the data processing and these products are made for new generation people not for the older generation someone have a question please unmute vijay you have a question uh, hi ravinder i have one question yeah please go to Okay. Yeah, uh, is it non-relational and it is uh, that's why we do, do call it as no sequel. Yes, yes, there is no relation here. Okay, and one more thing I wanted to reaffirm in MongoDB, are collections superset of database or are they subset of databases? Subset of database first database then collections anyway. Within the database, okay. collections exist, but collection to collection there is no relation. Even the, okay. the row to row there is no relation. In fact. Yeah, that's okay. I just okay. So collections are within a database. There, there, there can be many collections. Am I right? Right, right, right. right. That's correct. What I said. What okay, said, thank you. Right. That was all. Thank you. Right. So these products are for new generations. New generation in the sense like everybody have a smart device, many apps. They are generating data. So nowadays people have you know 100 GB storage within the phone itself. and they have a cloud integrated apps and they're generating different type of data in every minute every second so that kind of data absolutely not compatible with the rdbms products so definitely dependent on the no sql side that's where these products are coming to picture non relational there is no relation at all between the databases but in the collections but in the rows everything is independent here there is no joins in the no sql technology you cannot join it but you can embed the data what is embedded documents will going to talk about it's like a join you don't have to worry about the coding also i'm going to take four classes and the you know uh, crude operations you can write your own script it is dead simple anybody can write the script in the json script we don't you don't have to worry i'll spend dedicated sessions any one can write those queries very very simple and runs on commodity hardware any cheaper hardware you don't have to go to server class you are not running everything on one machine to uh you know like process it right so here your data if it is rdbms you definitely have to go to server class it should be so sophisticated and highly scales it should highly scale with the uh, io and all that right so when it comes to the no sql technology you don't have to depend on one machine there are multiple machines are working though it is not io scaled hardware still you can scale why because multiple machines are working for your single request so which means that it runs on very cheapest hardware you don't have to go to the server class hardware to run your product so that's a, another big advantage we have this product and open source this is a big deal we have a community edition enterprise edition in the mongo community edition as good as enterprise in terms of data processing power it does not get the automated backups there is no automated uh, monitoring there is no data encryptions and uh, there is no alerting and there are few things will miss out on the community edition but data processing power wise if you talk about community edition is as good as enterprise if you talk about sql server you talk about oracle if you talk about any other product for that matter all open source yes skill also have open source called express edition what is the maximum database is 10 gb it cannot go beyond it it used to be 2 gb now it is 10 gb it cannot go beyond that right oracle if you take about their data set is also has limitations so they are not free and they have a free but very the limited options here all no skill family has open source all in fact and they are licensed and licensed both you have If you go with unlicensed, you have to go with the support. If you buy the license, you will get the support. So that we, way, yeah. Go ahead. Are we not spending more money when compared to the hardware uh, on NoSQL rather than RDBMS? Yeah, that Because is a good question. That's right. So actually, you are running only one server, but here to farm this one, you need if you want to four shards, I need sixteen. 
that's 1921 servers i wanted these servers are low configured absolutely these are all actual servers where you are putting the data the more data you are getting it the more distribution you are doing it the more distribution you are doing the better performance you are getting it that is something you need more machines in terms of deployment but they are not server class they are cheaper machines in fact with one server you can buy 20 servers of this class in fact that costly it is a server class hardware in fact so and also this will compress the data by by default mongodb compress the data by default up to 75 percent 75 to 90 percent no rdbms will compress the data by default you have to compress it by nature it will compress one tb if i'm keeping it it will keep your data up to 100 gb only if it is a plain text data so there are many many things we need to talk about let's move on with the slides i'll, I'll talk about benefit by benefit anyway schema less what is schema less just now we have seen it does not follow any schema model you can insert the data in any format it doesn't matter it won't reject you the data in by default you can impose your conditions that is a different story but by nature by default it won't reject your data okay that's what is schema less highly available highly scalable scalable see if you call if you talk about the rdb rdb is not scalable it's not highly scalable you can only write into one server at any point of time you can have multiple secondaries it is possible up to eight secondary copies but all are readable you cannot write into any of the secondaries in fact right so one write limited you can read from all that's the difference writing is only one here it's not like that you can write into all the servers parallelly so it is absolutely scalable compared to rdbms absolutely available your database is not single point of failure if one file is gone in the database entire database is down in rdbm with the no skill even one complete shard is gone still your cluster is operational with available data so no single point of failure compared to rdbms the no skill technology better have the availability support based properties instead of asset properties i kept this as the last slide uh, we'll talk about it what exactly the base in fact mostly runs on the cluster you need to run on the cluster to get this benefits what i'm trying to say if you run as a single replica set we have a single replica set repl we'll call it a replica set you write all of the data here it will sync here it is a traditional rdbms cluster always on kind of thing but when you come with a sharded cluster then you'll get this benefit that's why it is runs on the mostly on the cluster to get the benefit built for the new generation built for the versatility of the data not for the rigid so the versatility of the data when it actually started when the people are started generating more data with the smart devices before that it was not there rdbms was absolutely fine for the it companies to maintain now data is become versatility that's where this product are getting popularized so it resolves a lot of challenges faced by the you know like rdbms and managing analyzing and archival data archiving data, the old data archival data you don't want uh, 10 years ago data but you want it someday maybe you offload from the rdbms load into mongo okay and the mongo cluster and get the data as analytical data what is the analytics you wanted to run it it's more faster than the rdbms in fact because it runs on multiple servers keep the all archival data or any data that you don't want in the live server in the rdbms go to the mongo db and place it explosion of social media sites like facebook twitter instagram they deal with the petabytes of data zettabytes of data in fact not petabytes still you never see the see the slowness why because there are hundreds thousands of servers are handling your request not one okay your data is actually distributed and it is compiled and given to you in microseconds okay how quickly you can get it uh, because depends on the number of servers they are deployed need for continuous availability you cannot see the social media sites going down you never see it because they maintain this architecture distributed computing model one shard goes down other one will other one will other one will take up so there are a huge group of servers that's the reason you never ever see the downtime at all and flexible data model schema less you can load the data any format structured semi-structured unstructured doesn't have any limitation just give it it will take it and if a data is too big it is a raw file still you can load into mongo like you are loading a video file you are loading some pdf file it is a file it's not data how its system is taking automatically you have the function in the mongo it takes any data it is attachment it is a text it is a video it is a pdf it is structured and it doesn't matter any data you feed it it will take it how we going to see that in practical i'm going to load all different types of data in front of you 
how it happens we'll see it then uh, no scale database great solution for growing scale up databases and uh, falling price of the commodity hardware this is a good point you raised it actually if you talk about storage if you take about 10 years ago one gb pen drive used to be in thousand in thousands even we used to have a you know like uh, the memory cards our pen drives take it as a pen drive for two gb pen drive itself used to be in thousands in fact now you'll get in hundreds you go to 32 gb 100 gb even one tb pen drive is also there and that comes at cheaper cost so year on by year the storage cost is coming down when the storage term coming down these products will shine more why because it deals with a huge data which data need more storage the more storage the lesser the cost it's good right so that way these products are getting popularized so keep key value pair this product is a key value pair we'll talk about what exactly key value pair in the in the product uh, offers capabilities to handle large volume of data using various available features in fact okay so we have a uh, data compression by default flexi flexible schema it can take the data in any format it is highly scalable than rdbms highly available than rdbms in fact right there are many benefits in fact so continuous availability no single point of failure one file is gone rdbms is gone from the database you have 100 files one single file gone 99 files are available still database is not operational but no is not like that multi data center capabilities so here i can keep two server sets in one data center other copy in other data center so this even this entire data center is down i'm going to do this all the r d there are many scenarios i'm going to run through this is not what is what my classes i'm going to run through all the practical things that we face in the real time i'll break it i'll show it i'll fix it that way it will go every class is like a workshop because you need to know reality to work in the real time that's very very important easy replication for distribution location independent capabilities very simple one single command will configure the replication one single command will form the clustering so we will see that the configurations are so simple anybody can do it if you know the sequence of configuration follow the sequence sequence is important anyway that i'm clearly documented you can go through it i'll i'll show in the video i'll give the notes in the sequential order you can easily configure anyway i'm there to help you out even if you get stuck one on one also uh, anyway i'll configure the laptops one on one i will connect one on one we'll give the environment once you pay the fees that's how it is so high performance with a linear horizontal scalability so it is horizontal see the scaling is horizontal horizontal means you are sending the request here 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 if it is rdms vertical why it is vertical only one machine at any point of time you are going to into one machine only so that's why it is vertical all rdms will go the vertical scale scaling all noise will go the horizontal scaling that's the big difference in fact i uh, flexible schema support easy to implement and maintain driven open source open source is the biggest thing guys see we have 90 percent of our servers are community we are not paying single penny one rupee also we are not paying it and we are running pet you know like roughly uh, one single cluster has 50 tb data and other other independent machines a lot of servers are, are running on the community edition that might be maybe more than 100 tb 200 tb 300 tb data i'm not sure but we are running 90 percent 95 percent of the infrastructure on the community edition only five percent on the enterprise and we are not paying it all single penny for the 95 percent of the infrastructure of the data operations only five percent so that's what so here you're getting the huge benefit it is not limiting on the data side only features wise no automatic monitoring no inbuilt backups no uh, uh, encryption supported so there are monitoring not supported so that is community edition you have to do it manually with your own custom own homegrown scripts i'm going to talk about that anyway how do we automate the mongo task using the cron jobs we have automation as a separate module for us and terms if you talk about the terms it is rigid and fixed schema rdbms we have seen that just now you cannot exceed the supplied columns what is there in the column and what is there in the table what you have to supply if not it won't take it is dynamic it takes anything in any format doesn't have any rule set by default you have to do it if you want vertical scalability this is a horizontal scalability right so this is horizontal this is a vertical we have just seen that difficult to handle big data see rdbms is also highly capable products but 
they cannot scale because you cannot do the maintenance that's the big big problem for us product is okay it can process petabytes of data it's okay but what happens down the line on petabyte of data you cannot do the rebuilding index because of that limitation time window limitation if you cannot do it you cannot get the performance that's where it will have a limitation on the uh, maintenance side a mix of open source and proprietary mostly proprietary open source are very limited in terms of data handling so they are not actually open source very limited absolutely open source you can get as good as uh, features in terms of data processing power and the community edition enterprise there is no limitation mostly standalone I mean one will write others will sync up but you write into one it is distributed you write into multiple servers three different multiple servers standalone uh, single point of failure no single point of failure one file is down entire database is down that's not good right asset property base property will see this this is the last slide for us uh, need server class hardware it need a highly sophisticated hardware to process the data because you're putting pressure on one machine and one hardware that must be absolutely so you know uh, sophisticated and it should have a maximum i go throughput commodity it can run on any even you are you can make your office laptop or your personal laptop also as one of the node because it runs on any of the commodity hardware no need of great uh, investment towards uh, infrastructure side it is very costly in terms of licensing in terms of server infrastructure and maintenance wise also okay uh, it is very average in fact it's really average so if you compare with the uh, rdbms licensing to no scale licensing it is not even 40 percent of it and enterprise i'm talking about paid versions not even 40 percent of the rdbms rdbms are the deadly costly cs they are very costly products compared to no scale that's why people are really showing why we need to go for the no where there is no need for the rdbms why do we go let's go to this product it even handles the structured layout as well it, it accepts everything in fact so next uh, key value pairs we have different types of families here key value pair document based and column based and codes graph based these are all different products redis cache this is a completely cached people use you know for the caching the data entire data is in the cache all the time so memcache calories and uh, document based this is a mongodb document based and a key value pair it will follow that architecture uh, we'll see that coach based raven db big table cassandra hbase hyper table infinite graph flag db these are all different product names for the naming convention i just i you know i kept these just to make you know that there are different products in the no scale also that is only the intention i wanted to keep these names else you don't have to worry about even i don't know much about the other products except the mongo into the no scale okay so introduction to basically big data what is big data in fact how does big data operates so big data in the sense like all social media runs on the big data and wide variety of people will come into the platform they do operate wide variety of data and you nobody sees any performance issues how does it is possible right for rdbms you cannot it is absolutely not possible basically because of the limitations on the hardware and the io side so big data is any data that cannot be handled and processed through traditional system normal one single system cannot do it it involves millions of users are accessing it millions of queries per second are going on billions of rows are processing out every second in and out and variety of activity at the same time like it can be video photos to comment or anything that is something different activities it can accept so different volume of data a large volume of data variety of different different variety of data like structure semi structure velocity speed speed is absolutely possible because of it is following the horizontal scaling uh, where data is getting distributed one single query is hitting hundreds of servers to get the request done so that's why velocity can be maintained someone have a question right vertical scalability in terms of uh, if you talk about rdbms absolutely vertical scalability increase the cpu increase the ram increase the disk on single server as long as you know the data set that you kept on the server is under uh, maintenance window if you can do the rebuilding reorganizing that's good enough but if you cannot do it is went beyond the limit what it can do within the window then you cannot help there basically you have to uh, build a new server and route the traffic to other servers something you have to do uh in terms of logic basically you cannot put everything in one server 
disadvantage these products are very costly in terms of licensing and maintenance and uh, infrastructure wise downtime if you wanted to do one one thing you definitely have to do the failover you definitely have to have the downtime it is mandatory if i wanted to expand a disk i need a downtime it's mandatory right basically you can do online disk expansion uh, but you have to extend that uh, physical layer at the os side yes you need a downtime threshold and limitation it is okay to certain level not okay after certain levels that's what is a limitation single point of failure one file is down from the database entire database will be down which is usual thing in the all the rdbms products in fact if we talk about uh, horizontal scalability horizontal scalability just when we talked about like multiple servers are responding to single request right because data got distributed and your data any amount of data can be handled because of the server list what is happening in the background is different compared to on rdbms add more machines as the data is growing more and more which is beyond the capability of one machine add more 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 shards more distribution it no need to be a shard even you can add a single standalone also as a shard but the problem is one server is down the entire shard will be down that's why we'll maintain the better redundancy to have the better availability okay scalability availability both are achieved with this architecture less cost commodity hardware it runs on the commodity hardware you don't need to invest much in fact right no downtime downtime is not required because multiple copies are already there if anything fail it will automatically fail over on all that no single point of failure one shard is completely down still the cluster will operate can be scaled down with a huge data any amount of data you take it about doesn't matter it can absolutely scale okay compared to this one so rdbms i'll conclude the benefits guys let me finish this then i'll talk about more in reality after this rdbms follows the asset properties model atomicity consistency isolation durability atomicity makes sure that transaction whatever the transaction you initiate either it should be completed or failed completely if it, a transaction is touching 100 server example you linked a server you have a link server and calling one stored proc and modifying the data on multiple servers if it is cancelled it should cancel all the servers or even in this one server also one transaction either it should be committed or fail it should not be in middle at all that is atomicity consistency consistency your data will be rolled back absolutely rolled back where it was if it is committed it will complete and it will make the change if it is not committed roll back isolation one at a time one at a time consistency of the data at any point of time your data is absolutely correct it should not be different from the operation in fact so isolation one at a time durability also we'll talk about almost similar thing you have the data if system get rebooted it will check the log file it will record the data up to the last you know status of the transaction it is failed failed success means success durability will take care of that the recovery of the data even unexpected uh, shutdown of the service and all that so basically available soft state eventually consistent this is something if i do any transaction it is completely asynchronous it is not synchronous you can make transaction a single transaction synchronous it is possible we're going to talk about that if i'm writing a transaction the transaction should be synchronous it has to write here 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 then give the communication back so you have the right acknowledgements i'm going to talk about that how we can define it uh, on top of the queries but for now if i am running a query and it runs here it will eventually catch up with other other one there is no synchronous transaction here and also log file also it will write into the mongo log first okay log first then it will synchronize with the data so little bit of a little difference is there that's why we'll call it as eventual soft state uh, consistency we'll see this i mean in reality when i get into the architecture i give you the better idea on that side how why it is basically available soft state eventual consistency yeah yeah please go ahead yeah <clears throat> Uh, see, if I write, if I insert the data a number of records into the uh, MongoDB, so whenever you, when uh, like n number of users are uh, accessing the same data, so how the uh, users uh, data will be uh, routed from one database or it will be uh, routed to different uh, uh, missions or different servers to fetch the data for different user? Uh, okay, good question anyway. Let me explain. So 
how does this happen anyway when you if when i when i discuss a schema model mongo schema model this answer this answer will be more clear for you for now i'll just try to explain you have this cluster you have this cluster your data is goes in the form of 64 mb one chunk is equal to 64 mb okay so here one one candidate information one record information one anything one if i have example first name last name and uh, you have a date of birth you have address address is again it has multiple things in it right it will go with the uh, inside the document again address has multiple addresses you have address line one address line two so sing first name is here second name is here date of birth is here address will go in a different document within one single document a sub document so here we are not dividing the data you cannot keep address in one collection and for person information in another collection one entity information will go to one document only so you when you are reading it when you are writing it one profile it will go to one document only does not mess up with other document at all there is no locking concept here as long as you are not going your profile is like a one document one document maintains everything about yourself every single thing whenever your profile data grows beyond 64 mb okay or 16 mb actually not 64 16 mb of your input grows example my video is more than 16 mb it will convert the request into grid fs format your data is not data it is a grid fs file system it will convert your request into file system it will take as a file it will fetch the file straight away so that's what test we will talk about i mean how does it actually scale with the, these many requests without locking locking is there when you cross reference from the back end from the front end they call what they are calling it what they are dependent like if i have a facebook profile my profile is one record it's a one row in the table you treat that way row has all my information if i had to go i only call my row only i don't talk to other row at all in the entire my life cycle so i don't lock any other profile i don't i don't lock any other's data at all there is no interdependency here so you access your row at any point of time you don't interfere with other row at all so where the locking and blocking is coming into picture you never see the blocking this concept is very interesting but uh, you don't get the 100 percent idea here you get the idea when i uh, uh, complete the fourth module on this point schema design you get at least an idea what i'm trying to say yes yes but anyhow anyhow i only don't i only use my profile or else i only use my transactions whatever i did but if any other users wants to re read my data or like like likewise uh, me and other data can uh, one person can uh, read the data uh, uh, parallelly that time, right right that time so, the locking and blocking will be happening right 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 actually it is like you know you have a snapshot isolation models it does not follow the uh, read committed model it will follow the snapshot isolation model every transaction will take the copy of it when they are reading it oh. they're not blocking it they it, I'll, I'll explain the architecture then you get the actual that is why i said it is not 100 percent answer what i said to you when i go into details then you get the more of understanding how this is really possible on the system without a locking people are doing the job right yeah. it does not follow the read committed model it will follow the snapshot isolation model there is a concept called snapshot that follows here and you don't see the locking yeah. there concurrency is very high yeah, on according, that to, according to rdms whenever a transition is running on a on a particular table or in particular record so once the the transition is committed then only the other uh, when uh, then two persons are writing the, pro, the first priority given to the insertion only so right, when right, the insertion right. is completed then only, yeah then only the record will be uh readed by the other person so See. here the, that is not possible right that is what a little bit confusing for my end so how right. this uh, record the, the data consistency will be there or else uh, data inconsistency will be there why because still the re record is not insert inserted properly even though record will be coming into the uh, other user parallelly so that is what a little bit confused over here right right i understand that's what i'm trying to tell you so here it follows the snapshot isolation where it takes the copy of the data. it does not log the base table in fact 
the base data set okay. it will go with the data set model we will talk about that architecture we have three classes and the architecture there it will be answered okay in detail in fact okay. Okay. you may, that's why you may not understand the entire answer but it takes some time to make you uh, clear on that one because this is something architectural question so when you understand the architecture you understand this point okay so mongodb used to call as tengen tengen is a old name it's not a new name tengen itself renamed to mongodb incorporation and mongodb is not owned by any third party there is no distributions here if you talk about uh, hadoop it has heart and works one distribution it has cloudra is another distribution product is name is hadoop but it has two distributions two different vendors are handling it mongodb no third party vendor absolutely mongodb that's it mongodb itself is a company no third party distributor uh, distribution app uh, involved and all the tools from the mongodb itself most of the tools you get it from the mongodb itself you have the third party anyway but you have the equivalent tools with the mongodb itself you don't need to go to third party for all the cases especially for the community edition you have to go to third party we will see that i mean some data conversions if for example mongodb is more flexible schema model it is a compatible with any product we will say that how do i say it is compatible example i have a lot of data in rdbms i have to convert this data into um, uh, mongo assume case i wanted to migrate the data from sql to mongo this data is 290 rows of data I have it i wanted to convert this data into mongo uh, i quickly wanted to someone asked me this data i need in the mongo okay then how do i convert it is so simple guys i did lot of conversions here in the mongo i'll tell you If I am running this query, oh, what I am doing? I have to call the name. Yes, the field, right? Yeah. If I am reading this data, this data will be read into JSON format. This is a MongoDB format. I'll take this data. Uh, I'll keep it in the Notepad. We have uh, license tools for this. I'm just showing you how this can happen because large data sets is not supported like this. So lab cloud dot insert many. I'm converting SQL data into what wrap is there, right? Is it ended here? Okay. Where it is yeah, it is this. Right. I'm converting this data into Mongo. Uh -huh. It's not ended with the just a minute. Let me look at the query structure. Insert many title and blah. Does this just what I'll play around with a small data set because it is huge, it seems. But that's conversion. I have this data, so I'll keep it uh, for JSON auto. I'm just showing you how it is compatible, kind of the Mongo see all rdbms will accept the json data that's a good thing and all json data can go to mongo with the one single click kind of thing so yeah db dot uh, testing one two three dot insert oh come on this i forgot in the last syntax i guess yeah so if i run this it is inserted into mongo db dot uh, testing one two dot find i got the rdbms data into mongo you understood see uh, this product is highly versatile it can take the data into you know from the rdbms to no skill side no skill to rdbms side because json it, it, it takes the data in the json format only it takes the data entirely in json format when it is taking json format all the products are supporting the json format even sql oracle postgres all the products support the json so mongo data can be easily can be converted to rdbms rdbms data can be easily converted to mongo 
that's another big advantage compared to other products this follows a purely json format the mongo data how do you write a json script is dead dead simple i'll tell you how it can be done uh, just for the case of example if you wanted to how a person details can be loaded uh, like uh, as i said uh, one person one unit in one table itself db dot uh, employee dot something insert idea sake i'm not finishing anything here so this is something a function oh, come on let me know guys if you guys are feeling bored with this structure and all when i can switch the topic first name i mean you just need to know this that's why you need to realize it how things work here on the uh, complex data systems in fact last name b something h so next i'll give it uh, address this is where coming to big picture address will have more details into it there you open up one more document okay so within the document again uh, you'll keep the details like uh, a street okay okay city locality example just for the case i'm just telling you this and state something like this guys just case so here it is ending here now i'll get the phone number multiple phone numbers you have it as you make it phone number whenever you have a similar family and multiple then array will be introduced phone numbers both are same address street and local all are different but here account account you have uh, account you have saving account and current account as in my case you can mention saving accounts you have it and uh, current account also you have it something like this and uh, here here if you have a second addre address one is example this is address one you have one more address you have some other details the more details so you open the one more document like this it is so simple scripting i'll spend four classes you write absolutely good script on your own dead simple this is how json look like in fact this entirely a json okay street something what is something whatever it is guys i'm just keeping it like this so you can form your own uh, uh, no complex structure document it's not a tough job i'll spend four classes there you get more comfort so if i go and take this data uh, the, as uh, this last one i am not keeping any commas there i'm just taking this i'm trying to insert uh, where unexpected uh, there is no closing thing let me see it here there is a comma missing and here 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 fine fine it looks fine uncaught still there is something is missing this parenthesis i opened uh, address line opened here and comma comma separated comma here separated address two fields not same right okay and comma comma what the heck it looks correct does one colon colon anywhere do you see that uh, quotations are missing not correct this looks good to me i can verify wait where it is closing it's not checking it right incorrect syntax missing after the argument list 
Ravi, I think uh, in the first line itself, uh, I can see insert and then uh, uh, small bracket, then curly braces will be there. Right, so, right, right, right. You absolutely uh, correct there. May I missed it, this one, right? Because the there is a basic syntax um, of the Mongo. Mm -hmm. Jason, yes, good catch. No, it should accept. It is accepted. So if I go and read employee dot find, so I'll make you the more better comfortable than your current product where what you are working. That simply this product is. If you connect with me on the product side, this is how it looks like. See? <laughs> I mean, the it's JSON script is very simple. Yeah, Everybody can try it. So simple. It's not logic based. It's just a, you need to know how data need to be projected. Uh, someone go and wait, please. I'm muting you. Right. So what and all? This is uh, something kind of a demo, guys. So let's come to what will be covered in our course module. First, introduction to NoSQL is done. Just we have uh, discussed this only about the demo. Uh, then we will talk about complete Linux basics. You know, people are a lot of people are in the class definitely from the non Linux. I'll cover three classes here. Three classes you should be familiar with the all the OS commands. I'll that is enough. Whatever I'm discuss, going to discuss in three classes or two and of classes, that is more than sufficient to survive as a DBA. It won't require more than that. What I'm going to discuss in the class architecture, this is something very, very important all your mindset should be clear how the product is actually really working in the background based on the error you need to catch the you know like answer if you understand the architecture you can resolve the many er many errors in fact so this is a very focused area you must understand and we'll discuss more of the questions here anyway crude operations the scripting insert update delete how it can be done how we can write your own queries i'll spend four classes here Schema design is such an important thing again. MongoDB does not reject any data, but I don't want certain data. And certain data need to be only in this format, then only accept it. That's what is schema design. We're going to impose the conditions, how data need to be loaded. Indexes, performance, this is one of the, all the modules are dedicatedly you know, divided and that area is completely discussed, okay? So don't worry about it. So I, I, I sent this course content and each module what is going to be covered i clearly maintained uh, mentioned you go and check it okay so this all will be covered whatever i mentioned it is absolutely will be there in the class right so just what is important from you know your side you have to be regular to the class that's very important other the rest leave it to me i'll make you expert that's for sure it's not what is what so any questions from anyone just stay back. I'm stopping the video if you don't have questions.